What's up, you guys? So I'm here with an update on the tragic story of Shanquella Robinson. We're all familiar with what happened to her in Cabo, but now new details are emerging. There's an update on what exactly happened to her as far as the timeline. There have been a lot of rumors out there as far as how long she was alive after she was injured and exactly how she was injured. But new details are emerging from the police report and they do conflict with the death certificate. So we're gonna get into the new details, but before we get into them, I want to tell you that it is gonna make you even more angry. I know everyone is outraged by what happened to Shanquella, but I just have to let you know, after you hear these new details, you are gonna be more outraged. So if you're at work or if you're in some type of position where you're not able to have a moment to yourself and experience your emotions, you might want to come back to this video because it is outrageous. All right, so this information comes from the Charlotte Observer. A lot of the information that I've shared on my channel has come from the NC Beat, Gerald Jackson. And I actually just want to give a shout out to him before I even get into what the Charlotte Observer is reporting. I just want to give a shout out to Gerald Jackson and the NC Beat for the amazing work he's done on this story, the information and the videos that he's been able to put out there to the public have really been transformative as far as getting justice for Shanquilla. But let's go ahead and get into the update. So basically the Charlotte Observer has a copy of the police report. They have an English copy. It was done in Spanish, but they have an English copy of the police report and it is conflicting with the death certificate. They say information from a police report says that Shanquella Robinson was alive when medical help first arrived in Cabo. And so that goes along with what Nazir Wiggins was saying. One of the alleged friends of Shanquella, he was saying that she was alive. And the police report also says that she was alive when the doctor or the medical professional arrived at the villa. She was alive for at least three hours after her injury. The Charlotte Observer goes on to say that the report differs from details previously reported from her death certificate that said she died within 15 minutes of being injured. Instead, the police report shows that a doctor from a local hospital was with Shanquella Robinson and others in the house for close to three hours before she was pronounced dead. And so we're gonna get into the timeline of those three hours. And this is the part that I said is going to make you angry. So they got the police report from Metropolo Mix, which is a Mexican media company. That's how they got the police report and then they got it translated into English. So the police report does not, it does not mention the signs of physical injuries on Shanquilla. They overlooked the physical injuries like the busted lip and everything that showed that she had been attacked. For some reason they overlooked it. But the police report does say that she suffered a cardiac arrest, which is new information. All right. So to get into the details and to get into the timeline, the information from the police report shows that at 2.13 p.m. Now, this is the time in Mexico. On October 29th, medical help was summoned to Villa Linda 32 in San Jose, Cabo. And it took an hour for the doctor to get there. They say around an hour later, Dr. Carolina Beatriz Ornelas Gutierrez of the American Medical Center, which is a local hospital there, arrived to treat Shanquella. And that's according to the report. And they say house calls two vacation rentals for routine non-emergency medical services are common in tourist hubs in Mexico. Now, keep in mind, this was an emergency. They're treating it like it's not an emergency. Like her, her so-called friends are lying. They're treating it like it's not an emergency. So they are sitting there waiting for a doctor for almost an hour. Almost an hour. They sat there and waited for a doctor for almost an hour. Not calling 911 or whatever the number is in Mexico. Not getting emergency treatment. They're going the, the non-emergency route for routine medical care. And they literally sat there and waited an hour for the doctor to get there. The Charlotte Observer goes on to say that it's unclear in the police report who called for medical help. But the reporting person is listed as Winter Donovan of Greensboro. Now, Winter Donovan, we know the allegations against Winter Donovan. There is video of Dejanae Jackson assaulting Shanquella Robinson, but there are rumors that Winter Donovan is the one that fatally injured Shanquella. 
That is the allegation. And they say Winter Donovan is one of six people identified by family, friends, and media sources as a person that Shanquella Robinson was traveling with. And of course, they could not reach Winter for comment. Now, a lot of what I'm going to tell you in this story revolves around winter. And I think we know the reason why this is going to revolve around winter. All right. So the doctor says that she was told that Shanquella had drunk a lot of alcohol and the medical call was for Shanquella to be given an IV. This is so infuriating. This is what they're telling the doctor, the alcohol poisoning story that they told her mom. They're also telling this to the doctor. Now, I'm going to tell you my theory about this alcohol poisoning alibi, maybe in another video. I think there's a reason they're saying this. But right now, instead of giving the doctor the proper information and saying that, you know, she in, she's injured, like her back is injured, her neck is injured, they're still lying to the doctor. So it's almost improbable for the doctor to be able to give accurate medical care when they're given inaccurate information. So the police report says that the doctor found a female understood in the report to be Shanquella Robinson with stable vital signs, but dehydrated, unable to communicate verbally and appearing to be inebriated. And again, I do think alcohol is a big part of this story, but we're going to get into that later because it is my thoughts. But right now, I want to give you the facts on the situation. Now, this is one of the most infuriating parts for me. The doctor reported that she believed Shanquella needed to be transferred to a hospital, but her friends insisted that she be treated in the villa. So the doctor sees that this situation is urgent, at the least. It's an emergency situation. The doctor wants to transfer Shanquella to the hospital, and Winter Donovan and their so-called friends, and the so-called friends of Shanquella are saying, no, let's just treat her here. And so this, to me is awful. It's infuriating. They know, they know that Shanquella has been body slammed. They know that it's likely a spinal cord injury, but they're saying, they're still playing it down and saying, no, let's not take her to the hospital. Let's just treat it here. They go on to say that the doctor attempted an IV, but was unsuccessful, according to the police report. And that does match with what Nazir Wiggins was saying when he was saying the IV popped out. That does match what he was saying. They don't know what medication was in the IV. They also say that the information from police says that the doctor was there for close to an hour when Shanquella began having a seizure. So there was a report of cardiac arrest and now there is a seizure. The convulsions from the seizure lasted less than a minute, according to the report. They say at this point, the patient's friend. And I'm, you know, these are not friends, but they say at this point, the patient's friend named Winter Donovan called 911 to request an ambulance. Now, that's according to the English translation of the Spanish report. And this was around 420 p.m. So we're just now calling 911 over two hours later. Over two hours later, we're just now calling 911. Two hours later. Two hours later, they say in the meantime, the patient presented with difficulty breathing and a lower pulse and they gave her rescue breaths. This makes me so mad. The fact that they could convince the doctor not to take her to the hospital, it makes me so mad. And the fact that Winter seems to be running this, like Winter is influencing the doctor and telling the doctor not to take her to the hospital. But then when she feels it's urgent, when she starts having, when Shanquella starts having a seizure, then she calls 911. Now it's time to take her to the hospital. The way Winter seems to be running everything is infuriating to me. They say the doctor, along with a friend, began administering CPR at 4.49 p.m. when the doctor detected that Shanquella had stopped having a pulse. So when they say the doctor, along with a friend, that may have been Nazir Wiggins. That was his live testimony that he also gave her CPR. And they say police arrived and talked with the doctor who was treating Shanquella at 5.25 p.m. It's not clear from the information in the police report exactly what time an ambulance arrived from the 911 call. The report indicates that paramedics administered a total of 14 rounds of CPR, five doses of adrenaline, and six discharges, which are the AED shocks, without success. So they were unable to revive Shanquella, and the doctor declared her dead at 5.57 p.m. So that differs from the death certificate, 
which said that she was dead at 3 p.m., 15 minutes after her injuries. And the police report information lists deceased person cardiopulmonary arrest as the reason police were called. So with this new information, what this tells me is that the second autopsy, I heard in the interview that Gerald Jackson did with Shanquella's father, I heard him mention that there's going to be or there was a second autopsy at this point. And it seems like that is going to be critical in getting correct information as far as what happened to Shanquella. Because now at this point, there's so much conflicting information. The friend's stories don't match, obviously. And now the death certificate doesn't match the police report. So there's so much conflicting information. In my opinion, the rumors about Winter Donovan being the one to give Shanquella the, the fatal blow, they, they seem plausible because of the fact that it looks like the friends are letting Winter handle everything. Like, you did this, so you handle it. That's what it looks like. That, that's how it looked like it played out. Like Winter was the one to call for a doctor. Winter was the one to call 911. Winter was the one running things. And it seems like it could have been because she was the one that fatally injured Shanquella. In any case, the facts are going to come out. There is being there's a second autopsy that's been done and the facts are going to come out. What's done in the dark comes to light. The facts are going to come out and I believe justice will be served for Shanquilla Robinson. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching.